Hey guys, I'm Alistair from City Rock and welcome to our first Self Rescue September video. This one is on knots and prussics and yeah, hope you enjoy. Before we go into the video, I just want to make a little disclaimer. Um, Self Rescue is, is a broad topic and there's a lot more to it than we can cover in this month in a series of videos and chats. So I really would like you to invest some time in yourself and your own safety and do a little bit of, bit of research and a bit of practicing and hopefully stay safe and see you on the walls. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the knots that you need for self-rescue, how to tie them, when to tie them and why you would use one knot over the other. Before we get started, I'd just like to introduce you to some concepts that'll help explaining things when we're tying knots. So this end of the rope that you're using while you're tying your knots is called the working end and the other end that you're not using is called the standing end. This guy's doing all the work, this guy's being lazy. Easy way to remember it. Then a bite is just a loop of rope that you can use for a bunch of things. You can tie a knot in the bite. Um, you'll use, sometimes you'll use the bite as part of a knot. And then the last bit is just dressing a knot. So some people, when they tie a figure of eight, don't lay the strands really nicely, neatly next to each other. And then their knot is not as strong and more difficult to untie afterwards and not as neat. So a well-dressed knot just means that you've taken the time to move the strands around and make sure that the knot is nice and neat. The first knot we're going to look at is the figure of eight on a bite. We should all know the figure of eight for tying in. And the figure of eight, eight on a bite is just a quicker way to get to that. You don't have to do the whole process. So all you do is you take a bite of rope and you just imagine that it was one strand and you just tie your normal figure of eight that you would do to start your tying in figure of eight. And then organize the strands nice and neatly and this is a perfect knot to use for making a loop at the end of the rope, whether you want to clip into it or clip someone else into it or clip it onto an anchor. It's really great for, you know, using a carabiner to connect your rope to something because it's easy to untie afterwards. It's a really strong knot and everyone knows how it should look. So it's easy for people to check that it's correct. Up next is a knot called the Flemish Bend, which is used to join two ropes together. And it's a variation of the figure of eight, which is is quite cool because it's easy to tie. It's not like you're learning a new knot. You're just learning a different way of tying a knot you already know. So you tie a figure of eight in the one end and with the other end you would trace it from the working end to the standing end and you just feed it in and trace it like you would when you're tying in. The only difference is that you're using two different ropes instead of different parts of the same rope. And that's a great way to join two ropes together in a way that's easy to untie afterwards because it's the figure of eight. It's easy to work it loose. It's really strong, easy to inspect. One thing you don't want to do is to have the two working ends coming out of the same side of the knot. So if you tied a figure of eight like this to join your ropes together, it's not a Flemish pen and this is quite dangerous because the knot can roll off the end of the rope. So make sure your knot doesn't look like this with the ends on the same side. Similar to the Flemish bend, this next knot is used to join two ropes together. I use this knot when I'm abseiling and I want to tie my ropes together at the top. It's called the European death knot because it looks quite dodgy, but it's really pretty strong and great for abseiling because when you're pulling the rope down afterwards, it has a flat profile. Hopefully you can see it better there. But while the, rocks, the rope's running over the rock, it's flat and there's no bit of the knot that sticks out to get stuck in cracks or what, what have you. So it's really great for that. It is important to leave a long tail on this knot um, because the knot sort of pulls open. It won't roll over, but it is a good idea just to have that extra tail. To tie the knot, 
you take the working ends of your two ropes together. Make sure that the strands are nice and neat and you just do an overhand knot. It's sometimes called a flat overhand, I think. And there you go, nice and neat. Another advantage of this knot is it's easy to untie afterwards because the strands are pulling the knot open afterwards instead of along the length of the knot. So when you want to untie it, bring the two strands together and they just pop through nice and easily. Really cool, a useful knot to know. Up next is a knot that every Boy Scout learns right at the start of their scouting career and for good reason. It's one of the most useful knots and also one of the simplest. It's called the clove hitch and it's great for attaching yourself to the rope, attaching yourself with the rope to the anchor and it's really quick and easy to tie. It's quite adjustable. I'm going to show you two methods. One is how to tie it in the air and then you can clip it onto a carabiner and the other method is how to tie it with one hand onto a carabiner which is quite a useful thing to know. So let me go a bit closer to the end. So you take your rope, lay it out in a straight line and make two identical loops. A lot of people get stuck and create symmetrical loops like this one or these two. So as you can see, both strands come together in the middle. So they're symmetrical, but they're not identical. This one has the strand on the top that goes to the left. And now this one has the strand on top that goes to the left. So now they're identical, now they're symmetrical. So make two identical loops and the two outside strands, the one that goes to the working end and the one that goes to the standing end, they slide over each other. And then you can just clip it onto a carabiner and pull it tight and you have a nice clovage. The second method is the one-handed method and it's quite easy to do when you tie it in. You take the rope and clip it into the carabiner like you would when you're leading and then you grab the standing end, take it around the front of the working end, add a twist and clip it into your carabiner and then you can pull it tight. A really cool thing about the clove hitch is when it's on a carabiner, there's this strand that goes in the middle between the two ends of the rope that are coming out and if you pull that, the whole knot is loose and it's really easy to adjust it in length. to give yourself a longer or a shorter tether. And like all knots, just dress it and set it. So just pull it nice and tight and you're good to go. This next knot, the Munter hitch, is really useful when you drop your belay device. Um, you can use it to belay, you can use it to abseil, and it forms the base of the Munter mule overhand, which is sort of a releasable knot that you can use to, for a variety of reasons. But essentially to have a releasable, a knot that's releasable while it's still loaded. So if you have someone hanging on a mountain mule, you can untie it and lower them, release tension on the rope while it's weighted, which you couldn't do with a figure of eight or a clove hitch, for example, because you need the rope to be loose to untie it. The mountain mule is really great for that. So we're gonna start with the mountain hitch, which you use a carabiner and the rope for. And Generally, you tie this in the middle of the rope. So we're not going to use the working end. We're going to leave that and go to the middle of the rope. And the easiest way to do it is to clip the carabiner around the rope. Twist it till your working end is over the standing end. And then clip the carabiner around the working end. And it can be tied similar to a clove hitch, which I'm going to show you now, but I found that this is the easiest, the easiest way to tie it. And one thing that is quite important is to make sure that the end that goes to the bottom that you're going to use in your hand is away from the gate of your carabiner. If you have it the other way around, this end can rub over the gate and unscrew your carabiner. If it's an auto-locking carabiner, move the action and your carabiner is not locked, which isn't great. Okay, so the manta, similar to the clove hitch, you start with two identical loops, but instead of sliding them, don't do that. You wanna fold them. 
of those two strands. And then you have a Muntich. Great for belaying. It rolls through the Caribbean. It is meant to do that. And it's perfect for, for belaying or if you dropped your, your belay or your abseiling device. Okay, so for the Manta Mule, start off with your Manta Hitch onto your Bina. Make sure your standing end and your working end are parallel. Add a twist and take the working end underneath the standing end and the working end, I guess. And you can snug this up to the manta. So you have your manta, and the first mule knot is an overhand knot tied around the rope coming out of the manta. Make your loop a bit bigger and add in a second overhand knot around the whole shebang. Because this one's quite confusing, I'd highly recommend people check out animatednots.com and check out their video. And there you go, a releasable anchoring knot that you can tie into a carabiner and release under load, which is really useful in some rescue situations. Up next, we have the girth hitch, which is most commonly tied with a loop. And for the older generations, it's the knot you use to connect your cell phone to your lanyard. And all you do is you take a bite of your loop, pass it through or around whatever it is you want to tie onto, and you take the other end of your loop through that bite and it just pulls tight and there you go this is great it can be tied with a sling you can tie it with a loop of cord your prusik loop and one thing to bear in mind is that because of the way the knot pulls it does weaken the strength of the rope or the cord or the sling a fair bit so just be bear that in mind it's not the strongest knot but it is nice and quick and convenient a friction hitch, or a prusik as they're more commonly known, is a knot that you tie around your climbing rope using a prusik loop, which is just a, loose, a loop of accessory cord. And they're really great because they can slide up and down the rope, but when you load them, they grip tight on the rope and don't slide. So you can use them to back up your abseil device. So if you lose control of the rope while you're abseiling, the prusik will grab hold and you don't slide down the rope. You can use them to climb up and down the rope. You can use them for a variety of situations. They're pretty much the Swiss Army knife of self-rescue and rescue and they're so versatile. They're just super useful. It's probably one of the most useful skills you can learn as a climber is how to tie a prusik and use it to get yourself out of a lot of situations. So definitely pay attention for this next bit. We're just going to cover three of the most common ones. The French Prusik, the Classic Prusik, and the Clem Heist. And those three cover a variety of scenarios. Pretty much every situation that you need a Prusik, one of those three will be good. There's thousands of variations, but if you've got those three, you've got a really useful set of tools to help yourself out. For those of you that don't already have a Prusik loop, the best bet is to head into the gear store and chat to the guys there. Essentially, you need a short length of five or six mil accessory cord. You don't want to go too thick. Seven or eight mil might not bite on your climbing rope. And four or three mil might be a little bit thin and it's not that strong. So roughly a good guide is a bit more than half of the diameter of your climbing rope. So if you're climbing on a 10 mil rope, six mil prusik is, is perfect. And you can tailor the size a little bit to you. You don't want it to be too small, otherwise you won't be able to do enough wraps on your prusik. And you don't want it to be too big because then it gets a bit unmanageable. 
Generally, big is better than smaller. You can always tie a knot just to shorten it a bit and overhand knot in the, in the loop will make your loop a bit smaller. But I have a small one and a big one and that way I've got one for different scenarios depending on what I need. The classic Prusik is probably the most well-known Prusik and it's great for a few reasons. One, it's quite easy to tie and check. Um, it loads in both directions. You can pull up on it and down on it. Um, and it's, it's really secure and it's hard to release even by mistake, which has pros and cons. The pro is that you can't release it by mistake, but the con is that sometimes you do want to release your Prusik while it's loaded and the classic Prusik isn't the greatest for that scenario. It's really great for climbing a rope using the Prusiks. To tie the classic Prusik, you take your Prusik loop, make a girth hitch around the rope with the knot slightly offset close to the end. Knot, end, girth hitch over here. And then you just continue wrapping the rope in the direction it was going and back through your first loop of the girth hitch. So you now have a girth hitch with two wraps around the rope on each side. And this would be a two wrap prusik. And if you went around again, you'd have a three wrap prusik. And if need be, let's say you had a really thick prusik loop on a thin rope, you could do a fourth wrap and a fifth wrap if necessary to make sure that your prusik doesn't slide. Make sure all the strands are nice and neat. And there you go. It's quite important for all of the Prusiks to make sure that the knot is separate to, to the Prusik knot itself. The knot that joins your Prusik loop together is separate. Um, and that, yeah, can slide it, can load it and it doesn't slide, which is really great, super cool. Up next is the French Prusik, the one I use the most regularly because I use it for abseiling, which I do quite a lot of. And this one's really great because it's easy to release while it's loaded. Um, it's not great for sending a rope or escaping the belay where you need a really secure prusik, but for under your belay device where it's not taking a lot of weight and it's nice to be able to release when it's loaded, it's perfect. It's also really quick and easy to tie. You take your prusik loop, I line up my knot with my carabiner, and essentially you wrap the loop around the, the rope. And you go a few times and then you clip the top end of the loop into the carabiner and it's as easy as that. And when it's loaded you just pinch the top and slowly push down to release. Cool eh? Last but not least we have the Clem Heist which is a combo of the French Prusik and the Classic Prusik. Similar to the French Prusik, clip your bean onto the end by the knot. And similar to the French Prusik, you just wrap the rope around and around until you feel like you have enough wraps. I normally do three or four depending. You can do more or less depending on how much your Prusik is slipping. To finish it off, take the carabiner and the knot if your loop is big enough or if it's not big enough, undo the carabiner and pass the bottom end through the loop of the top end like you were tying a girth hitch, just differently to the classic Prusik. And then, there you go. Clip your beaner back into the knot end. And this one can only be loaded in one direction, unlike the classic Prusik, but it's semi-releasable under load, and it is quite secure. And it's probably the Prusik I'd use most after the French Prusik. Um, yeah, nice and easy to release a good prospect.